and, and you know, you mentioned Ivy League. And, and I feel bad sometimes because I I over index on the Ivy League guys, and sometimes I'm critical. There there were some great SEAL officers that came out of for the sure. Ivy League, for sure, some outstanding guys, no doubt. But they were more the exception than the uh, the norm. So as I'm talking to Johnny Kim, Johnny was oh, yeah, like speaking of Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> that was after he became a SEAL, so he gets a he gets a, a pass. And, and Johnny brought up a story in my life where I'm like, Johnny, that's that's not a good story. So, uh, you know, we're talking about Buds, and we're talking about Ryan, and him and I are, you know, you can tell we're getting a little emotional on the phone. He's like, hey, you remember that time we had a Harvard officer in our Buds class who actually worked for Enron? But some officer, you know, I don't know what, what, what the fascination was. They're like, oh, this guy went to Harvard, and he was with Enron, and, you know, and he's, he's in Buds. And um, this guy was, I mean, arguably one of the smartest guys in the class, not as smart as Johnny. Um, and He's he the just, guy in the class. <laughs> this guy just alienated everyone. He, he thought he was the smartest man in the room and he was egotistical. He was an a-hole. And Johnny's like, so he's telling the story about we're running to the chow hall and still there's like 250, 225 people in the class. And this guy knew I was a recon Marine. And, you know, sometimes you'll run the formation. There's one guy that let, runs to the, right of the uh, is it the left or the left right? left this is my the, yeah for a marine that's that's pretty embarrassing so he <laughs> runs to his, the left put his hands up the yes. one that makes an L to your left Mike. and he's singing cadence and he's just ripping on recon and Johnny's laughing on the phone because the whole class saw this guy just fall out of the main formation run out and I just took a hand you know sort of the the knife not the knife hand but the, the hard hand with the open and hand slap knock the helmet right off his uh his head and it goes rolling across the street and he has to run over. I just took over the cadence and uh, I'm like, Johnny, that was not my best moment. <laughs> but this guy- I, I kind of like that moment. This, this guy was, uh, he was gonna make it through Hell Week. He, he was gonna meet the physical requirements and the mental toughness requirements, but the cadre stepped in and dropped him. And that's rare mm -hmm. because he was just that- Toxic. He, he, that toxic. And yeah. it's funny that the, the instructors could recognize that. Because usually the instructor's like, hey, he meets all these requirements, we can breed that out of him. Effective intelligence is the ability to use the intelligence you have in a real world setting to solve problems for which there is no playbook. And that is the heart of special operations. So there, you know, we found a study. What would you guess was the average GPA of most millionaires that went to college? I have no idea. 2.9. 2.9, and that's my saving grace because I think I got a 2.9 on my head. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, well, hey, average. Uh, but no, so what we found in the people that are off the charge smart and what we saw in the SEAL teams is that they suffered a lot from paralysis through analysis yeah. or they made things so overly complex. And when you work in high stake environments, time is usually a factor. And it goes back to the, the second law of combat, simple. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's all good stuff. And, and again, hey, we're not bagging on the guys that came in and had awesome education, and a lot of them were awesome. And and, and here's another th another reason that it hurt the community was because these guys would be coming in and they were had such high potential. This is in the '90s. There's no war going on. They do four years. They they get they do their assistant platoon commander. They do their platoon commander. They look at what's ahead of them in the '90s, and it was like, oh, you're gonna. You're gonna you're gonna you know ride a desk for the next 18 or whatever the next 16 years before you can retire and guys would say you know I'm gonna get out and I'm gonna go do do something else so it, it hurt us from a just a personnel building standpoint as well but that's uh, the other thing that I've seen is where you get and look some people pull this off and they do it great but there are some people that have a problem taking their highly intellectual view of something and translating it to the frontline troops where now the people the people that have to go and execute whatever it is you want them to execute is doing it in a simple clear concise way that's why simple is one of the laws of combat but you know part of the law of combat is planning keep your your planning simple the other part of that law of combat is to communicate simply and there's a lot of people that have a hard time doing not a lot there are some people that have a hard time doing that so that's a that effective intelligence is uh, is definitely an important thing.